Hey folks, David Stewart here. Let's talk a little bit about plot and something very specific having to do with plots, what I call plot goals. Yes, I'm finally talking about plot in a Storycraft video. Very frequently people are asking me to do more videos on plot, talk about plot structure, how to execute plot, and I'm hesitant to give out a lot of specific advice for a couple of reasons. The first one is that I think it's a little bit anti-creative if I tell you that this is the thing that you have to do uh, in a plot. Um, I think a lot of creativity has to do with how you plan out the event sequence of a story and what events happen in what order, which is what I consider the plot. So I don't want to give too many prescriptions for how things ought to be done because you may think of a new way of doing it and that's creative and valid and good. I tend to think just in terms of effect. You do this, it has this effect. Is that the effect that you want? The other reason is that if you have a prescription like, you know, you have to write a three-act story for a movie, then you may take a story that doesn't fit that that structure and kind of cram it in there, cut stuff out that needs to be part of the story that's kind of endemic to the feeling of the story. Every story has a different length, has a different feeling to it, has a different kind of focus, different strengths depending on what media you're in, whether you're doing comics or a novel or a movie, and those things should be recognized and not uh, be forced into some predetermined plot structure because other movies have that particular format. Uh, the format of your story is dependent on what that story is, and a big part of what makes the story what it is is this concept of plot goals. Whether you're writing for comics or books or movies or stage or whatever you're doing with your story, plot goal is always there, and that is an essential element of a book. What is a plot goal? Well, a plot goal is a desired outcome. It can be anything, and it can be desired by either the audience or the protagonist, usually both, because you want the protagonists to be trying to achieve a plot goal, but not always, and I can talk about that in a minute. So if you think of any kind of example, you think of Star Wars. What's the main plot goal of Star Wars? What's the goal? What's the thing that people want to have happen? Well, they want the Death Star to be destroyed, and the entire structure of the movie is derived from this main plot goal of we got to blow up the Death Star. What's the plot goal of Lord of the Rings? It's destroy Sauron's ring. What's the plot goal of To Kill a Mockingbird? Well, it's to get Tom Robinson off. Now, that example is very important because in Star Wars, you achieve the plot goal in To Kill a Mockingbird, that plot goal of, of saving Tom Robinson fails. So plot goals aren't always achieved in stories, and in some cases, it's better if they're not achieved. It changes the feeling of the story, and it's important um, for certain stories for the plot goals to not be achieved. Usually with a tragedy, the plot goals, at least of the protagonists, are often unfulfilled. You can think of Romeo and Juliet or any kind of Shakespearean tragedy. It's about setting up a plot goal, and then that plot goal fails. You know, the tragedy of Julius Caesar you have... You have Brutus fighting this rebellion, and it fails at the end. Um, spoiler alert for a, a very old piece of drama. So what leads up to that main plot goal and determines its failure or success, that's really the meat of your story. Now, you have a plot goal, like blow up the Death Star, and then you have a bunch of things that stand in the way of you achieving that plot goal, and those tend to be the events that are moving you closer to the plot, uh, to the end of the, the story and the goal of the plot or are inhibiting characters' progress towards the end of the story and the goal of the plot. So um, you can think of these as plot points on the way, and within a plot with a large plot goal, you can have subplots. Subplots have separate plot goals. Sometimes those plot goals contribute to the main plot goal. Other times those plot goals are independent. So a typical movie would include an A, B, and a C story. So the A story is the main plot goal that's established early in the early in the movie in the first act, and um, usually in the exposition. And the earlier the plot goal is is really described and and identified, usually the more tension you're putting into the movie and the the more attention you're able to grab from people. Um, so you have a, a plot goal, and then you have a B story that's usually like a romance, and then you have a C story, which is something that helps resolve the A and B story and move you into the third act, where you have a bunch of final action that's able to finally either achieve the plot goal or cause failure with the plot goal. You don't have to use that particular structure, but that's the way a lot of movies are written. So your A story, the plot goal, like if you imagine a story with a guy, like maybe you're going to make a movie about a guy who's going to see his his dying father because his dying father wants to give away his fortune and, and he never knew his father. So he makes a journey to meet his father. That's the A story is 
is am I going to re- actually reconcile with my father? And for what reasons will I reconcile with him? Am I going to do it to get the inheritance money or, or am I going to meet this man that I never knew? And will it complete my life? And will it give me, you know, what will it give me emotionally? You might have a B story. He meets the, the nurse of his father, his dying father, and he has attraction to her. So the B story is a love story. And maybe that B story helps resolve the character's emotions about the failure of the A story. Maybe at the end of the movie, you have a C story. You have kids that this main character didn't know about. And they're coming in to try to get the inheritance money and make the, the father like sign a new will. So you have a bunch of tension that adds up at the end and kind of resolves everything. And maybe the character decides, I didn't care about the money. I cared more about knowing my, my father and the nurse. Um secretly helps him and prevents him from actually signing the will or shreds it somehow so he ends up with the money even though he didn't want it that might be like a an interesting little tight resolution with an an a b and a c story but each of those has a little bit separate goal you have uh, the c story would be an antagonist goal we want to take the money and the b story would be i want to get the girl and the a story would be i want to reconcile with my father and maybe some of those fail, like the obviously you want the antagonist's C story there to fail. Antagonists can have their own plot goals. Um, in fact, Empire Strikes Back, going back to Star Wars, the plot goals are all about the antagonists. And um, what was interesting about Revenge of the Sith, Episode 3, is that you had this extra final act that was about all the, all the protagonists all failed, and then the plot goals of the antagonists were succeeding in the final act. Um, so that's really what I think of with plot goals. Now, You may have heard this word conflict thrown around. What's the conflict of the story? I don't like to think when it, when I'm trying to think of event sequence, I don't like to think of conflict um, necessarily because conflict, uh, you usually think about people arguing with each other, people not getting along, um, people fighting against something. And not all stories have a conflict that's direct and in your face like that you may have a story about a guy with one leg learning to run so that he can complete a marathon plot goal is I want to complete a marathon. What's the, you know, the, the, the thing that's holding him back is he's out of shape or he has one leg. He has to learn to overcome uh, all of these obstacles in order to finally reach the plot goal. What's his conflict? Like what's he in conflict with? Well, I guess he's in conflict with his own limitations, but we don't usually think about like fighting our own limitations as if they're an actual antagonist. It's more about uh, a goal and obstacles that prevent that goal. And I think that's a more hel- more helpful way to think about it, at least when you're doing event sequence. When you're thinking about the way a protagonist and an antagonist interact, of course, conflict is a big part of that. But when you're just thinking about event sequences and obstacles, conflict doesn't necessarily doesn't necessarily have to be a part of that. So some sometimes people say, "Well, where's the where's the opening conflict for the story?" It's like, where where are you establishing the plot goal? Where are you establishing the main goal of the film? Now I mentioned you can have plot goals fail. To Kill a Mockingbird is a great example. You have this plot goal. You know, certainly the protagonists, the main protagonists, want this guy Tom to get off, to not be convicted of a crime he didn't commit. And it becomes more and more clear that he didn't commit the crime. But there's a high degree of uncertainty because we don't know what the jury's thinking and and we think the jury might convict him. And indeed, the jury does convict him. There's a failure of the plot goal, which then sets in motion an extra act of the book, um, which is about the fact that even though that plot goal failed, it still created a a conflict with um, the father of of the accuser. And, and he, he becomes a bad guy. He becomes an antagonist, a villain. And that last part of the book is about um, how the, the plot goals have shifted away from um, something that ended up failing to being something defensive, that the, an antagonist ends up having a set of plot goals and um, how you end up reacting to, to his failure on those or his success on those becomes uh, the real meat of the end of that particular story. So plot goals don't always have to succeed. And indeed, you usually want a couple of them to fail because that makes um, a, a more interesting story, a story that can go in different directions. If the um, if the protagonist is just be able to barrel through all obstacles towards the main goal, that's something that a Mary Sue tends to do, not something that a, a, a legitimate and interesting protagonist tends to do. So that's really what I like to think about with plot is what is your plot goal and how are you going to inhibit um you're going to inhibit your goals to there. Another way that you can have subplots, I mentioned you could have subplots that contribute to the main plot. If you imagine a format like The Hobbit, right? The Hobbit 
the goal is we're going to go try to steal as much treasure as we can from this dragon. And that's like way at the end, and there's this epic journey on the way. Each chapter of the book represents a different small plot goal and a different obstacle towards reaching that main plot goal of the dragon. So you have, um, you know, you run into some trolls and the trolls are going to eat you. And who's going to save us from the trolls? Oh, Gandalf saves us from the trolls. Okay, so our plot goal of not being eaten by the trolls was successful, um, but the trolls were an obstacle. We get captured by goblins in the mountains. The goblins, like, eat the ponies. Now we have a bigger obstacle towards reaching our goal because we don't have our pack animals and we're hungry and we're alone in the, and then the wolves are chasing us. So each chapter focuses on this obstacle and this danger that's in, being imposed upon the party trying to reach their ultimate plot goal. So each little chapter has its own little plot goal. And that's another way that you can think of, of uh, plot goals and subplots is that um, each obstacle you have to have a goal to reach that. And then you have to have some way to get around that obstacle, to overcome that obstacle. And if you're thinking of The Hobbit, then it's like, um, you know, Gandalf uh, does some magic and they run away. Um, or And then Bilbo, as another little subplot, gets the ring and has to use that to escape. Um, you get uh, tied up by spiders at one point. And you have to figure out how to get out of that. Oh, well, you know, Bilbo has a magic ring. He'll use that to just to pull this, to distract the spiders and lead them away while the other dwarves cut up and the, the spider silk and free them. How are we going to get out of this prison? We'll put you in barrels. And, you know, so each obstacle towards the goal has some solution that helps the party to get through it. And, and, um, the format of the Hobbit I, and I think this is one of the reasons that the movies always felt very awkward is the format of the Hobbit. It doesn't fit like a movie format very well it's like a series of adventures that lead to one big plot goal and then of course after we get to the end there's an even another another level of plot goals that get uh and they get announced essentially as a result so there's a consequence to the success of the plot which becomes the battle of the five armies which brings about tragedy and um tragedy and triumph in the same thing so that's a great one to look at that uh, the format doesn't fit what people normally today think of as the way a, a plot ought to be structured. Um, but it's it's really better because of it. And uh, a lot of your favorite books probably don't fit what a lot of script doctors would say are like a, is a proper way to format a script. Um, Godfather 2 is a great example. It just doesn't fit what normally normally is considered a proper screenplay format at all it's got this different time differential stuff and two different characters two different kind of goals going on um it's a very different kind of way of structuring uh the movie and it's better because of it it's more interesting because of it so i'm hesitant to give prescriptions you need a goal and it's up to you as a creative person to figure out what obstacles am i going to place in the way and what solutions am i going to offer what's the interesting solutions people are going to come up with uh, my my characters are going to come up with in order to finally achieve the success of the plot goal so hopefully that's an interesting introduction to the idea of plot goals um do the protagonists always have to have a plot goal that's the same as the as the audience and the answer is actually no i was just thinking of this example uh, this is a, a frequent trope in romantic comedies which is two characters want somebody right so one character wants this girl and this girl, you know, and a different girl wants a different guy, and but but you know, it's set up so that the audience really wants this guy and this girl to, to actually get together, um, and so they have the characters have different uh, plot goals uh, from the audience. The audience wants a desired outcome. The characters want a different desired outcome uh, because the audience sees that oh, these two are so perfect for each other. Why can't they just get together? And then the characters have various difficulties with the person they're pursuing the person they're trying to date and then they finally at the end of the romantic comedy end up with the person that they're supposed to be with and the the resolution of the conflict if you will um the the achieving of the goal is from the audience's perspective the correct one but it wasn't initially from the protagonist's perspective the correct one and of course those goals can change whenever you're writing a story halfway along the way it, it's up to you how you want to how you want to do that so um thanks so much for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe and let me know what you want to see and what you want to hear think of some of your favorite movies and um probably right away you'll think of oh there's a there's a primary and forceful goal and all the stuff that happens leading up to that goal is really the meat of the story that's the um, that's the event sequence and now you can think of I don't know there's there's so many to think of you can think of Terminator 2 uh, how the 
the goal shifts from survival to acting and being a warrior. So this is a midpoint shift that happens a lot in hero's journey type stories where you go from running away as the as your main goal to I'm going to fight back and, and achieve something meaningful as your main goal. So that's something that, that you can see a lot in hero's journey kind of stuff. It goes from escape to conquering. And you can see that in Star Wars. It goes from we got to escape the Empire and get the plans to the Rebellion to now we need to actually really blow up the Death Star. We need to turn and fight. So um, anyway, I, I thought I'd throw those examples in at the end. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.